Hey, in today's video, let's talk about drywall, sandpaper, and various sanding devices. Okay, I hear a lot of questions all the time on my channel about which sandpaper should I use for this and which for that and so on. I know it confuses a lot of you. And so I'm gonna walk you through some of the sandpaper I use and the sanding sponges and that. Now in a separate video, I'm gonna talk about all these different sanders that I have, because I have about six different sanders. I have the long, narrow, rectangular ones. I have the round nine inch ones. I have triangle ones. I have, uh, I think these are, these are rectangular, but bigger. I forget the size on them. And I have sanding sponges and all these different sanders. Well, I've got a separate video. I'm gonna show you why I have so many and what the benefit and of each one of them is. Let's go over sanding grits and such first. So first I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what I've got here. These funny looking ones right here, this is the old school Porter Cable sander. They came um, with this backing, this foam backing disc, which is Velcro. And it was just the way they were designed. I've since converted mine over to use these solid styles here i like it better and it seems to work just fine so that one just looks kind of funny but here we've got the rectangular sandpaper and that's for like this sand pole here which is the one i grew up using i have sanded probably a thousand miles with this thing right here and it's a good sander and it still has its use i still use that thing so we we have some here that is held on by spring clips you can also get it in Velcro. And then you might wonder what this funny looking one is. Well, I actually do have a triangle sander. And I see I don't have it handy right here. But on, on the other video, I'll tell you what the uh, why I bought this. And it really is a pretty handy sander. And then I have the Black Widow, which is this 6 by 8 uh, inch size. So it's kind of rectangular. It's a pretty cool sander too. I just bought that recently, partly to try it out. And I'll tell you what I think about that on the other video. And then most of the rest of these right here are nine inch sanding disc in various grits and styles. Now I'm gonna start with the coarsest one and tell you why I've got it. This is a 24 grit sanding disc. Now for normal drywall sanding, you don't want this. You, you might sand through your drywall and I think it takes 1.2 seconds. Okay, that's a little exaggeration, but no, what this is really good for is if you're trying to sand off your popcorn ceiling, it works pretty well if it hasn't been painted. Once you try and sand anything that's been painted with a rotary sander, it doesn't work real well, and this is why. This is where I use the same grit, 24 grit, sanding a wall scuffing up the paint and knocking down some high points and it'll just gum up the paint will just it gets really soft and gummy and just loads your sandpaper up really fast and these are pretty expensive so you really don't want to do that so if you sand a painted surface just scuff sand it don't bear down on it too much and and realize that even with the coarsest grit it can still load up so i use this for sanding off popcorn ceilings. I also use it sometimes after I've scraped off the popcorn, the majority of it. This will quickly remove the rest of it and it actually doesn't do that much damage to the drywall. And anywhere that you need coarse sanding, mainly for scuffing up paint. Anytime I'm gonna texture like a skim coat a wall that's been textured and painted, I scuff it with one of these or at least an 80 grit because you want some fairly aggressive scratches in the paint. You're trying to take some of that gloss off. Nothing likes to stick to gloss anything. If it's shiny and smooth, nothing likes to stick to it. So we scuff it up, give it some scratches, and we call it tooth. You're giving it tooth for the mud to hang on to, and then it doesn't peel off so easily. It also, anytime there's a pretextured wall or ceiling, there's gonna be little bumps sticking out and you wanna knock those off. This will knock them off really quick. 
So that's about all I use this for is really aggressive sanding. Hey, I put together this two page uh, printout that will help you guys. I'm gonna make it available on my online store at that kiltedguystore.com. You can go there and check it out. This two page guide will give you all these different scenarios and which uh, grit you wanna use along with alternatives. I hope that helps you out too. Okay, the next grit here is 80 grit. This is level 360 disc. It doesn't really matter. There's a lot of different brands out there. Uh, these are pretty good discs though. They're Velcro also. And 80 grit is a good one for um, just, again, it's pretty aggressive sanding. Let's say you're gonna sand down a butt joint. You put it on pretty heavy because it was a bad one, say, and you need to sand it down fairly aggressively. If it's plus three, I probably wouldn't use this. Plus three sends really easy. That's pretty much any lightweight joint compound sends really easy. This will go through it so dang fast you'll, you'll probably make a mistake and sand off too much. But this is good for sanding, say, um, regular weight all purpose if you put it on heavy somewhere. Or if you're quick sanding, like in between coats and you're just going over it really quick to knock off the bumps and the lap marks, this works for that if you're gonna put another coat on. Now, if you're doing like a level five or anything, you might wanna not even use this at all. In that case, you might wanna go up to like either 120, this is 120, and uh, this is a pretty good uh, grit to use like in between coats. Again, the, the 80 grit, I do use it fairly often, but you gotta know how to move it pretty quickly. And especially with a rotating disc like these style, if you have the power sander, it'll eat through your drywall mud so fast if you don't know what you're doing. Now, if you're using it on a manual sander, this doesn't spin, then you can get by with a little bit more aggressive disc. The next grit up would be like this 150, or this one's 180, but most of these are 150 and they're all pretty close. This is a good one for like, let's say after your first coat, you could hit it with this. And again, it really depends. If you left it kind of rough, you might want this 120 or even the 80. If you know how to put it on pretty smooth and you're just trying to knock off those final little bumps and final lap marks, this 150 is a good one. So you could also use this, say, after your first coat on corner bead or after your first coat on recess joints or even on the butt joints just to knock off the high points. 150 is a pretty good one for that. Now, let's see, next up would be this 240. 240 is a good grit to have if you're doing level five. You wanna use uh, at least 240. If you can get 320, that's not bad either because when you're doing something like level five, you don't want sand scratches. They will sometimes swell during painting and they tend to want to come through more. Now, if the painter does it right, they should be putting on a high build primer and possibly back rolling it and putting on two coats of paint and it will cover 240 grit. I've used 240 grit on level five many times and done if you paint it right, it covers these fine. So that's a good grip for that. Now this just kind of shows the whole gamut here. There's 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 240. Sometimes what I really want is 240, but all I could get was 180. So if I was going to have a nice selection that I'd recommend you guys have, it would probably be 120 and 180 or 120 and 240. You could get by and do a whole job with those right there. But if you're doing this very much, you might want some additional grits. Now, a lot of the power sanders these days, like the WAN power drywall sander, it comes with a whole variety. And I think that's where I got some of these other grits. Now I'm gonna show you one other style that I've used. This is, um, says use it abrasives. And I forget there's a brand name on the website, I think. These are pretty cool, but I've come to not like them because of this. They, they're too brittle. They break really easy at the slightest little thing. 
these other discs, they just kind of go until you, about the only thing that destroys these is if you sand with a power sander and you go up to say an electrical box and you hit the screw or the metal, it will rip these. This seems to rip way too easy, but I gotta say it does sand pretty dang fast. It seems to sand faster than normal grit. So I think this is, I know this is 80 grit. It sands really fast for an 80 grit. And with these air holes in here, it can help reduce the dust. Although on my Porter cable, it didn't really work that well because mine draws it all from the outside. If your sander draws it from the middle, it could help reduce dust loading up. I'll show you one that I made one time. This, I just took the backing off of another disc and I glued some red scrubber pads to it. And I was using this to kind of lightly scuff up some surfaces. And I just thought I'd show it to you because sometimes you gotta get creative. Now, generally these will do the job just fine. Now I also wanna point out sanding sponges. Actually, this video was getting a little long, so I'm going to put that part out in a separate video if you want to know all about the different types of sanding sponges, uh, ways you can use them, etc. Be watching for that. Coming out soon. Hey, and before you go, I'm going to put a link to the other sanding video right at the end. You'll see I'll show you where it pops up. Also, I've got just this one last thing for you. And hey, this month, I want to give thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys have been with me for a long time, some of you for years, and I really appreciate your support. Your support helps me put out more content like this. Thank you so much.